We're glad that you joined us for our online worship today. We're always blessed because you've taken the time to watch us. Know that we pray for you and ask God to bless you. Today we take a look at a longtime servant of the Lord who was coming to the end of his life and was about to transition his ministry over to another young man. We'll read our scripture today from Paul's letter in 2 Timothy. We begin in the third chapter, verse 14, through the fourth chapter, verse 5. But you must continue in the things that you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And from that childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. May God add his blessing to his holy word. We live in a difficult world. It's a difficult time. We have a lot of things that we see in this world that cause us to shake our head and to wonder. We see a lot around us that concerns us. The economy is in trouble. We deal with crime and violence. What seemed to only appear in big cities now seems to rest at our doorstop. People are more and more difficult to deal with than ever before. Politics has become about tearing down your opponent rather than stating what you're going to do for the good of the country. It's easy for people to become discouraged, but the scripture tells us that as Christians, we should not be. The scripture tells us that this world is not our home. The Lord is going to come and one day take us to be with him in eternity. We need to be focused on that, and we need to be ready for his coming. In this letter to his spiritual son, Paul writes to Timothy and he encourages him with two goals to help him. First, he says to Timothy, the scripture which you have known since a child, believe, continue in it. And next, he invites Timothy to follow his example. As Paul was preparing for the end of his life, he laid out his ministry before Timothy to follow as an example, to lead him. Let me ask you today, who is following your example? Who is looking to you to lead them? What do they see in the way that you live your life that you do in order to build up the church? What can they pursue and believe that it's Christ's will for their life because they saw you do it and saw how faithful you were to it? Let me start where Paul began with Timothy. How well do you know the scripture? If someone was to say to you, the Bible says, and then quoted something that was wrong or partially misquoted, would you know the difference? Have you spent enough time in the Word of God to know what you believe and what your faith is based on? You've been given the Word of God to guide your life. You've been given the Scripture of God to lead you in the way that He would have you to go. 
Do you know it well enough to know what God desires for you? Or have you listened to what others say and said, well, I believe that sounds good. I believe that, that must be right and not bother to compare their statement to what the word of God says. Paul tells Timothy, do not fall into that, but trust what you have learned since you were a small child and what I have taught you as a young man. Don't rely on what someone else says, but on what the word of God says to us. Paul warns Timothy that in the last days, there's gonna be a great deal of false teaching. We're living in that day. That day is among us. We have been given the word of God. And with that, we are responsible to know the truth. God gives you his word in order to help you live each day of your life. And we should take time to read it and to know it and to understand it. Paul warns Timothy that in the last days, there's going to be two types of people that we need to look out for. He says, evil men and imposters. He says, they will grow worse and worse, both deceiving and being deceived. There's a warning here to each of us. There are those out there today who preach things that sound good, but they contradict the word of God. Paul tells Timothy to continue to learn the things that he has trusted and the, the people that he knew were good to teach them. Can people look at your walk with the Lord and declare you to be faithful? Can they trust what you believe and say this is from the Lord? That's a question that you need to know. You need to ask yourself. Because I promise you, you may not know, you may not see, but someone is watching you. Someone is looking at how you make decisions. Someone is looking about how you decide what you're gonna do, what your values are, and what you'll stay away from. You may not know it, but you're a model for someone. Someone sees your faith and they look to you. This is being the faithful model that Paul was speaking about. Here again, what Paul writes to Timothy. He says, you must continue in the things that you have learned. Others will tell you different, but you must continue in these. Timothy set himself against the things that were not right. And he believed the word of God. There will be hardships there'll be persecutions in following the Lord, but you must continue in the things that you have learned. Timothy, you'll face those who disagree with you and who try to discredit you, but you must continue to preach what is true. You'll become unpopular. There'll be people who won't like you because you're a Christian but you remain faithful. I ask you, take that personally. You become faithful. You be counted on. And I ask you to pray for me that I continue to do my best to preach the truth, the word of God. For a pastor, his prayer should not be that a life of ease comes, but strength to do the work that God gives to them. That's also true for the lay person. We need to have the courage to stand firm, to be unashamed of our faith, and to believe in the things that God calls us to do. Paul spoke to Timothy about the word of God and its importance. God directs us through his word. He always has. In John, the first chapter of the first verse, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God spoke to us. He spoke this world into being. He breathed life into mankind. The Bible is God's direction to us for our life and for our ministry in this world. It was given by His inspiration. It's authoritative. 
It is without error. It is infallible. The Word of God tells to us the truth because God cannot lie. A newspaper once had in its editorial section a letter from a man who said that over the last several decades, he had gone to over a thousand church services. Looking back, he said, I can't remember the specific content of even one sermon. I must wonder what going to church those thousand times did for me. A few days later, the paper published a reply from a man who read his letter. He wrote, my wife has prepared for me over 1,000 meals, and I've eaten them. And I can't remember the specific menu of any of those meals, but they nourish me along the way. I would be a very different man if I hadn't had them. We would be very different people without the Word of God. The Bible is intended to do the work that God wishes within us. And if we will open our heart to the Word of God and hear what He says and guides us to do, it will change our lives. It will encourage and strengthen us. It will make us better people. Paul wrote in his final letter to his protege that the Bible is profitable for doctrine. In the Moravian Church in our Covenant for Christian Living, we affirm that the Bible, the Word of God, is the only source for doctrine. He goes on, Timothy does, or Paul does in his letter to Timothy, and he says it's profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I ask you, where else will you find these answers to the questions of life? I realize that there's some passages in the Bible that you may not understand. I take great heart in the fact that the Reverend Dr. Billy Graham once said he couldn't explain everything that was in the Bible, but that he believed this passage that said it was given to us by the inspiration of God. In the 1940s, Dr. Graham struggled with believing that everything was true. He wondered if he could trust everything that was in the Bible, and he decided that he could. And once he could, once he committed his belief to the authority of the Word, the keynote phrase of his preaching was this, the Bible says. He preached that till the rest of his life. Brothers and sisters, it's still good today. The Bible says. I don't not deny in this day that we have more knowledge than previous generations had. But while we have more knowledge about many things, I'm not sure that we have the wisdom and the faith that our forefathers had in God. Paul wrote to us that in the last days we would have to deal with many false prophets and imposters. And there are many who try to twist the Word of God, the faithful doctrine that we believe, and try and make it suit their own beliefs. They twist the Word of God. They change it just a little bit to change its purpose. We have to know what's right, what the Bible says, and be able to understand when we hear that. We need to understand that as Christians, we have been made in the image of God. And for many years, there are those who are trying to remake God in the image of us and make him take on our beliefs. Brothers and sisters, I promise you that will not happen. We are not God, we will never be. We will never have his wisdom. We will never have his understanding, his power. His word is clear about his sovereignty, his love for us, his plan for our salvation and to be with him forever. Do not be led astray by those who are self-serving and would try to minimize their sin. God loves you and he has made a way for you to be with him for all eternity, to be blessed forever. And that way is through his son, Jesus Christ. There are not many ways to heaven. There is one way through Jesus Christ. 
He says, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Believe that. Paul closes this letter with this. He says, I charge you therefore before God and Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach the word. Paul was an older man now. He had served the Lord for over 30 years. He awaited execution at Rome's Mamertine prison, basically a dungeon that was over 12 feet below ground. As a Roman citizen, he could not be crucified. He could not be thrown to the lines. He had been sentenced to death and he waited to be beheaded. Yet he still believed in the second coming of the Lord. And he charged Timothy to continue to preach with the same urgency with which he preached and to keep as many as he could from being lost. As I read this epistle that he wrote to Timothy, this young minister, I look at these words that he has passed on to us. From 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse eight. Do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. From the first chapter of the 13th verse, hold fast the pattern of sound words. From the second chapter, the second verse, the things that you have heard me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men. From the second chapter of the 24th verse, a servant of the Lord must be able to teach. And from the third chapter, verse 16, all scripture is given to us by the inspiration of God. Paul told him in the last days, there would be a lot of people who would not endure sound doctrine. He said that they would give in to their itching ears wanting to hear what they believed rather than what the Lord taught us. Today we live in a world where Christians are persecuted. We don't see it as much in this country, but in many countries they are put to death. They're treated poorly, unable to have certain jobs. Their children taken into slavery. They're martyred in many parts of the world. In this country, we may be made fun of. We can be called intolerant. That's very little to suffer for our Lord. Paul's direction to Timothy is the same as it is to his direction to you and me. Brothers and sisters, but you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, fulfill your ministry, but you be faithful, fulfill your ministry, do what God is calling you. The Lord will return and will stand before him one day. I pray that on that day we'll be found faithful. Let us bow. Most gracious Heavenly Father, you've left us not unto our own, but you've given us your word and the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us to you. Let us trust that and that alone as the source of our faith and you as the source of our salvation. Lord, your love for us is beyond belief. You took us, Lord, when we were sinners and you brought us close to you. Keep us close evermore until you take us into your eternal kingdom in heaven. And until that day comes, may we be found faithful, doing what we can to build your kingdom up, to help your people, to be faithful to you. This we pray in your holy name. Amen.